Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and today we're going to be talking about games that are fun after the main story. So, I know that there's a lot of games out there, and a lot of them, they take a lot of hours to get through them and stuff like that, but every once in a while a game decides to give the player something to do after the main story, and um, I, I really like that. I, I like being able to take all of that hard work that you've had and used and continue to um, make good on it and to be able to uh, use all of that hard work further down into the game. And sometimes uh, developers decide to let people play the story over and over again via you know, a, a la like, New Game Plus. Sometimes the, the game is open-ended where you can just team up with people or it has a whole different mode where you play online with friends or even sometimes it's uh, just looping over and over again with a raising difficulty or a combination of any of these three factors. And even there are some uh, different ways that a game can continue beyond the main storyline that I have even explored or explained in this little bit of the video. Uh, if you know of any, please let me know down in the comments below. Now, uh, first off, we're going to start off with one of my favorite beat em ups. It's Dragon's Crown. Um, I know the art style's a little bit controversial, but it was released in 2013 by Atlas. It's a great game. It's released on the Vita. It's released on the PS3. It's released on the PS4. And I have a feeling that it's going to be on the PS5. Um, at least with backwards compatibility. This is a great game. Uh, basically, it just goes through, and its way to let you keep having fun after the main story is that it continues the story, and it actually increases the difficulty three or four times, and also it lets you play with your friends online, so you can go back, and you know, if you have a friend that's struggling and, and stuff like that, you can go back and like help them out and get them leveled up, and you can also choose different characters to go through and play this game. Um, my favorite and the one that I've gone the most with is the wizard. Um, the second favorite is the sorceress. But that's it's just a great example of a game that lets you take all of that invested time and tweaking and equipping and gaining money and gaining power and gaining levels and lets you have fun with that beyond just the normal storyline. Uh, the next one is Starlink. Released 2018 by Ubisoft. Now, I bought the Switch version of this game, and it's great. I love it. Um, it is my favorite non-official slash official Star Fox game out there. Went out, I bought all the ships. I bought all the weapons. I know, I'm, I'm a sucker for Toys to Life. But this game lets you explore beyond just the main story. You can go back to... Uh, the universe and continue to fight pirates pretty much infinite um, go back and do the collectathon stuff and unlock all of the abilities and, and level up all of the ships and level up all of the pilots and and just continue to work on things and just uh, create different combinations of the ship so it's very innovative in that way and I'm very sad that Ubisoft actually gave up on the game um, next up, we have Chrono Trigger, 1995 Squaresoft on the Super Nintendo. Guys, this is just the classic uh, New Game Plus. It's really well done. You can explore the game, get multiple endings. That's another great thing for, for uh, enticing people to keep playing the game is to offer multiple storylines. And some of those storylines are only, and, and endings and stuff, are only available through New, New Game Plus. Um, and you can gain various equipment, choose left instead of right, you know, all kinds of things through New Game Plus that is just a wonderful experience. Speaking of New Game Plus and Chrono Trigger, the next one up is Chrono Cross, 1999 by Squaresoft. Um, I have a huge love affair with this game. The, the music, the story, I don't know, it just, it just grabbed me. 
and I love this game so much that I plan to go in greater depth about the whole whole experience and why it means so much to me. But like I said, the the big to cut it short on this one, so we can spend a little bit more time elsewhere. This also has the new game plus, but I remember specifically on this one, there are, are characters that you can only get if you make certain decisions, and to, to get all of the roster of characters, you have to do New Game Plus. So, now we're going to move on to Fantasy Star Online, released in 2000 by Sega. And this is a huge series where you can go through and you play the basic story, and you get through it, and it's, it's great, it's wonderful. And then... The story is over, but you can continue teaming up with your friends online and continue to great, you know, to in increase the character development and increase your uh, resources and your armor and your level, stuff like that. And go on these online events and stuff like that. And uh, Fantasy Star 2 is released out in the U.S. finally. It took them way too long to get that out here. But, uh, you know, just teaming up with your friends, going through certain dungeons, having as much fun. Just remember having tons of fun with this on the GameCube back in the day. And it's just a great example of being able to ex explore a world beyond what the main story is. Next up we have Forza Horizon 3 2016 by Playground Gra Games. Uh, and it's it's on the Xbox, uh, or uh, sorry, the Xbox One, and it's a great game. I love it. It does everything right. Uh, the main story is like kind of odd, uh, where you're just expanding things and trying stuff, but you can basically side story off of that forever and go to different islands that are DLC, all of this other stuff. Great. It's a great racer. It's I wouldn't exactly call it an arcade racer. It definitely leans more towards the sim side of things. But just being able to unlock new cars, gain new money, more money, just get more cars, upgrade cars, change things around, and change out parts and stuff. Great. It's a lot of fun. And I still go back to it to play this game. Next up, we're going to have Code of Princess, released by Atlas Games in 2012. Um, it's it's basically Guardian Heroes, you know, released in 1996 by Treasure. You know, what I can say about one of these games, I can definitely say about another. Uh, you you level up, you pick your level up. Now, Code of Princess, that's only on the 3DS version. In the Switch version, they kind of uh, take that choice away from you. And they auto level you, which is fine. Uh, but you learn, you learn new things. You get new equipment. Um, sometimes you raise stats, and depending on which version you you have. Uh, I don't think you have. Yeah, you don't really have equipment that much in in Guardian Heroes, but I might be remembering that wrong at this moment. But. Uh, you can tag team with friends and stuff like that, play against each other, play in a versus mode, and you can just go back to earlier stages and grind and get more levels and get more money and get more equipment and get more everything. Just get more enjoyment out of the game. Just because you finish the story and everything does not mean that it has to be over before Code of Princess or Guardian Heroes. And they're just, they're great. Um, you know, absolutely wonderful experience with both games. Speaking of going back and grinding levels, basically any of the Dynasty Warriors games, except for the first one, the first one was actually a fighting game, uh, released in, what, 2000 by Koei. Um, these games are great, and uh, it's just a big, huge 3D uh, beat em up game where there's waves and waves of enemies coming towards you, and there are RPG elements. 
and the RPG elements for why you're doing the grinding. Go back to earlier stages if you need to level up a couple of times to beat a stage that's beaten you a couple of times. And it's great. It's, it's a wonderful series. Basically any of the Dynasty Warriors stuff, including some of the offshoot stuff like Dynasty Warriors Gundam, it also falls in. It's where you can just basically go back and grind and gain more experience, maybe gain some equipment, um, you know, and, and just get levels and all this other stuff, get reputation if, it's, if it exists in that game. I mean, there's just a huge gambit of stuff that you can collect within these games. Now, um, speaking of collecting, the Ratchet & Clank series released in 2002 by Insomniac Games. I'm a big, big Ratchet & Clank fan. I love the tongue-in-cheek humor. I love uh, the weapons. Mr. Zircon happens to be my favorite. Um, and just going through and the comedy of the world and collecting bolts and upgrading the weapons and doing the collect collect upon stuff is really just it's so much fun especially in this setting and that's why this game I, I consider it to be fun beyond what the original story is once you finish the story it's you know, okay you finished it but did you unlock every weapon did you get everything that's like the you know the the golden bolts did you unlock the ultimate weapon the the omega versions of the weapon you know it's there's all sorts of unlockables within this series that just just take it beyond everything and into another level now talking about games going above and beyond the Batman Arkham series, first started by what Rocksteady and Vicarious Games, or uh, it's really, you know back in 2009. This series is wonderful, and I absolutely love it for unlocking uh, various gadgets and upgrading those gadgets. And you know, you you can just blitz through and do the whole you know beginning story and not care about care about anything but there are these side stories like arkham city as oh, i think almost every one of them has a challenge from the riddler and the riddler challenges are great um you feel like batman when you get them done and it's great it's wonderful i do plan on going back and reviewing all of the arkham series of batman games definitely in more depth because they deserve that level of attention. And, you know, just having the ability to go off in these other directions and stuff like that during these Arkham games is definitely a welcome addition. Um, so, lastly, we're going to talk about Darksiders 1 and 2, and technically 3, um, and Genesis because I just recently finished that one as well. Uh, so those are THQ, uh, released in 2010, and I think the last two were released by TH THQ Nordic, but the series essentially started in 2010, I believe. Um, going back and uh, finding the Abyssal Arc, I mean, that's that's literally what it's about in the first two games. The third one, they have some DLC content that you can go through and get the Abyssal Armor and stuff like that. Um, and these these games, like the Abyssal Armor, is basically why you go back, and then you can go through and play in arenas and, and various other stuff like that. And it's great. It's a lot of fun. Um, the first two Dark Siders are really great. The third one takes it in a different direction, but thankfully there's classic mode um, that you can go back and play as classic. And then Genesis is uh, just another good direction that they ran off with and stuff. And you can still go back and uh, go back and grind and get more stuff and get more souls so that you can purchase more things from Vulgrim and stuff. And it's a lot of fun. And it's something that even though I've 
beaten the game, I went back and I decided to have more fun with the game by going back and playing earlier levels over and over again and just, you know, seeing what I could pull off and you know, could I pull off this stun? Could I shoot an enemy and get away with doing this and not get hit? Could I get this boss and defeat him a different way? And that's that's just some of the additional challenge that I put myself put towards myself uh, during these games. And it's it's just a wonderful experience, but all of these games that I've mentioned are great and wonderful for being able to take your experience beyond what the crafted story for the game was. Well, that's it for this episode of Monday Designs. I'm your host, Monday. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of the month.